Spring is almost here, arriving on March 20th, and that means new energy, because in feng shui, the spring season signifies new beginnings. Is the layout and the energy of your current home still working for you? If not, I'll share some tips on how to improve your space so it does. Susan Chan here, feng shui realtor based in New York City. It's been quite the year, huh? Many of us are still working from home and we're realizing that our current setup is just not set up for our new needs. Not only are we working from home, we're on back-to-back -back Zoom calls while homeschooling, home chefing, and in dire need of adult sanctuaries and playtime areas. Anyone feel my pain? We may not be able to set up our homes to cater to everything, but what we can do is prioritize what's the most important areas that we're currently in need of. Here are some tips to help make your current space work for your priorities. Now one, if your priority is an effective work from home area, you wanna be sure that you're feeling the best you can when working, and that means feeling a balance of energy and calm. The way to achieve this in feng shui is to sit in the command position of the room you're sitting in. Be sure you can see the door of the room that you're sitting in. If you can't see the door, place a mirror so you can see what's going on behind you so your energy doesn't get startled if somebody walks in. Now to get more information on the command position, use the link in the description below or check out my video here. <laughs> if your priority is a Zoom room, place some plants or nice artwork behind where you're sitting. I know you won't see it when you're on Zoom, but be a good feng shui neighbor and make your colleagues feel nurtured and happy when they see you on their screen and your beautiful backdrop. It'll make for more effective and harmonious relationships. Now, if you aren't able to create a real relaxing backdrop, try some of the great virtual backdrops they offer on Zoom. They're really fantastic. Now, if your priority is homeschooling, just as you set yourself up for success in your work area, you wanna do the same for your children. Kids are usually more fidgety than adults and may need additional support. So this is what you can do. Set the area up with the same tips as your work from home area and add other elements such as scent and color. Now, if your child needs focus, use lavender or jasmine oil. If your child needs grounding, use cinnamon or sandalwood scents. And if your child needs energy, use citrus scents such as oranges or lemons. You can try candles or adding that essential oil in a diffuser. Now when adding color, blues and greens are very calming. Yellow is energizing and orange is heartwarming. You don't need to paint your whole room, thank goodness, but just get some foam core, paint it the desired color, and pin up some inspirational images and quotes and voila, instant feng shui for kids. So each time your child starts their school day, they'll have something happy to look at. And if these tips work for your kids and they sound good to you, feel free to use it in your work from home space as well. Now, if your priority is an adult sanctuary, even in normal times, this is sometimes the area that gets overlooked. So we really need mama's space and we need to work on it, don't we? So here's what you need to do. Make sure wherever that space is in your home, it's set up with the correct energy. The most important things to consider when you're creating this sanctuary is sound, light, and boundaries. Now let's start with sound. If your sanctuary is in the corner of the family room, and quiet's not possible. Invest in a pair of earplugs or noise-canceling headphones. If you opt for the headphones, you can listen to the sound of silence, play relaxing music, or follow a meditation. To further enhance your sanctuary, adapt the lighting. Usually going darker in a room helps grounding and relaxation, so if you can pull the shades, do so. If not, invest in an eye mask and go one step further and dab it with lavender oil. Instant sanctuary. And lastly, create boundaries. What's a sanctuary if everyone is interrupting you where you're in your zone? Be sure to set up some boundaries, which can be in the form of real physical boundaries or just symbolic boundaries. What I mean, for example, is if you put up a folding partition or curtain, that would be great for physical boundary. But if that's not possible, you and your family can agree upon an object or a sign when displayed signifies, please do not disturb relaxation in progress. Now, if you're able to implement one or all of these tips, awesome, you're off to a great spring. If not, maybe it's time to find a space that can cater to your current needs. Well, you're in luck. On March 25th, please join me and my team for a homebuyer seminar. 
Well, we'll tell you everything you need to know about buying in New York City. I'll also, of course, include some feng shui tips that can help make your home buying process faster, smoother, and more fun. Now, did you like this video? Please share with your friends, subscribe, or leave a comment or question below. And remember, feng shui is not a luxury, but a necessity. Thanks and see you soon.